Good day everyone, Dr. Polaris here. The genus Pseudorix, also known as the Sowler, the Asian unicorn, or the Wu Chang ox, is an unusual bovid that dwells in the remote mountain forests of Vietnam and Laos. It is one of the rarest large mammals on Earth, and its habits and ecology are still poorly understood even today. The name Sowler has been translated as spindle-horned, although the precise meaning is actually spinning wheel post horn. The name comes from the Thai language of Vietnam, but the meaning is the same in the related Lao language. The specific name, Ng Tien Hensis, refers to two Vietnamese provinces of Ng Ge An and Ha Tien, while Su Doric acknowledges the animal's similarities with the Arabian and African oryx. The Hmong people in Laos refer to the animal as Sat Surup, a term from Laos meaning the polite animal, because it moves so quietly through the forest. In the media, Saulers have been referred to as Asian unicorns, a nickname apparently due to the Saulers' rarity and reported gentle nature, and perhaps because both the Saulers and the Oryx have been linked with the unicorn in the past. Saula have striking white markings on the face and large maxillary glands on the muzzle, which could be used to mark territory or attract mates. They inhabit wet evergreen or deciduous forests in eastern Indochina, preferring rivers and valleys. Sightings have been reported from steep river valleys at 300 to 1,800 meters above sea level. In Vietnam and Laos, their range appears to cover approximately 5,000 kilometers including four nature reserves. During the winter, Saula tend to migrate down to the lowlands. It is the sole member of the genus Pseudorix, and is classified under the family Bovidae, which also includes the antelopes, sheep and cattle. A recent sequencing study of ribosomal mitochondrial DNA of a large taxon sample divides the Bovid family into two major clades, the first of these is the subfamily Bovinae, consisting of three groups, Bovini, the cattle and buffaloes, Tragolafini, the African spiral horned antelopes, and the Bocephalini, uh, the Nilgai and four horned antelope. The second clade is the subfamily Antilopinae, which includes all the other bovids. Antilopinae is also composed of three groups, the Caprini, the goats, sheep, and musk ox, Hippotragini, the horse-like antelopes, and the Antilopini, the gazelles. Since its physical traits are so complex to clarify, Pseudorix has been classified variously as a member of the subfamily Caprinae and as belonging to any of the three other tribes of subfamily Bovinae. DNA analysis has led scientists to place the Saula as a member of the tribe Bovini, therefore making the Saula close cousins of wild cattle. However, this animal was completely unknown to Western observers until the early 1990s. In May 1992, the Ministry of Forestry in Vietnam sent a survey team to examine the biodiversity of the newly established Vu Trang National Park. On the 21st of May, the team procured a skull featuring a pair of strange, long and pointed horns from a local hunter. They came across a similar pair in the Ammonite mountain range in the northeastern region of the reserve the following day. The team ascribed these features to a new bovid species, calling it the Saula or the Wu Chang Ox to avoid confusion with the sympatric Ciro. The WWF officially announced the discovery of the new species on the 17th of July 1992. According to biodiversity specialist Tony Witten, though Vietnam boasts a variety of flora and fauna, many of which have only recently been described, the discovery of an animal as large as the Saula was quite unexpected. Indeed, the Saula was the first large mammal to be discovered in the area for over 50 years. In 1998, William G. Robichaud, the coordinator of the Saula Working Group, recorded physical measurements for a captive female Saula he named Martha. The animal was observed for around 15 days until she died from unknown causes. Robichaud noted the height of the female as 84 centimeters at the shoulder. The back was slightly elevated, nearly 12 centimeters taller than the shoulder height. 
The head and body length was recorded as 1.5 meters. The general characteristics of the Sowler, as shown by studies during 1993 and 1995, as well as the 1998 study, include a description of its chocolate brown coat with patches of white on its face, throat and the sides of the neck, a paler shade of brown on the neck and the belly, a black dorsal stripe and a pair of nearly parallel horns which are present in both sexes. Local people reported that the Sowler is active in the day as well as at night, but prefers resting during the hot midday hours. Robishaw noted that the captive female was active mainly during the day, but pointed out the observation could have been influenced by her unfamiliar surroundings. While she rested, she would draw her forelegs inward to her belly, extend her neck so that her chin touched the ground and would close her eyes. Though apparently solitary, Saula have been reported in groups of two or three, as well as up to six or seven. Robishaw observed that the captive female was calm in the presence of humans, but was afraid of dogs. On an encounter with a dog, she would resort to snorting and thrusted her head forward, pointing her horns at her opponent. Her erect ears pointed backwards, and she stood stiffly with her back arched. The female was found to uricate and defecate separately, dropping her hind legs and lowering her lower body, a common observation among bovids. She would spend considerable time grooming herself with her strong tongue. Marking behaviour in the female involved opening up a flap of the maxillary gland and leaving a pungent secretion on rocks and vegetation. She would also give out short bleats like a goat occasionally. The Sowler is currently considered to be critically endangered. Its restrictive habitat requirements and aversion to human proximity are likely to endanger it through habitat loss and fragmentation. Sowler suffer losses through local hunting and the illegal trade in furs, traditional medicines, and for use of the meat in restaurants and food markets. They also sometimes get caught in snares that have been set to catch other animals raiding crops, such as wild boar, sambar, and muntjac deer. The key feature of the area occupied by the Sowler is its remoteness from human disturbance. Sowler are sometimes shot for their meat, but hunters also gain high esteem in the village for the production of a carcass. Due to the scarcity of this animal, the locals place much more value on the Sowler than more common species. Because the people in this area are traditional hunters, their attitude about killing the Sowler is hard to change, thus making conservation difficult. The intense interest from the scientific community has actually motivated hunters to capture live specimens. Commercial logging has been stopped in the nature reserve area of Bu Huang, and there is an official ban on forest clearance within the boundaries of the reserve. Because the species is so rare, there is a continuous lack of adequate data surrounding it, and this is one of the major problems facing Saula conservation. Rather remarkably, trained scientists have never observed Saula in the wild, and there are none present in zoos. Unfortunately, because it is unlikely that intact Saula populations exist, field surveys to discover these populations are not a conservation priority. Let us hope that conservationists can protect whatever remains of this unique animal's populations, as unfortunately the extinction of the Sowler may be on the cards. Thanks for watching everyone. Next week I'll be examining the Agogwe, a small ape-like cryptid from Tanzania and the Congo. See you again soon. Cheerio.